Hey, Chris, how you doing? Greg. <laughs> yeah, I just got that guy up there right now. Uh-oh. So we're not... Uh... I switched over. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yeah, I just had the, the logo up there for a little while. Um, Got a little problem with my other computer, so we're going to have a little bit of shuffling around when I switch over to the other camera later because uh, we got a, um, a topic from the forum that uh, I thought well hey you know there's a few of them sitting around the shop here so I can show you what I use and uh, featherboards was the, the way I was going that way so um, other than that what's everybody, everybody been up to? Hey Greg glad you can make it you guys got the video going yet? Let me see if I can see what the problem is. All right. Well, I can kind of see me on there, so it seems to be going all right. Didn't get an ad. I think that's a Canada thing. <laughs> that, and they added the thing to be able to skip the ads now, which is kind of cool, um, which they didn't have before, and I, I wish they did, but... So we'll let... Uh, let this thing get a going here a little bit. Seems to be running at least. <clears throat> Actually, speaking of Canada, I um, I got another talk scheduled with Hendrick later this week. Uh, his uh, his DVD on sharpening is the one we just went through, and the next one is uh, his his other newest video. We'll be going over that later this uh, later this week. So that's kind of cool. We're going to be giving away the sharpening DVD today. Well, we got a small, small number of people, but at least we got somebody on here. And Greg, actually, I think you're the one that brought up the topic for tonight in the forum. So uh, hopefully you get a chance to ask some of them questions. And welcome, everybody, to the live cast. And this is it. So, well, I guess we can get started. If anybody wants to call in for any reason, I got Skype up. I got Skype running. And I will switch my status to online uh, so I actually get calls. Number 920-933. 4940 or username Ravenheart. Anybody calling and asking questions, always welcome. Or you can use chat. And as usual, you can always use a contact forum for normal questions and stuff. So if anybody out there listening hasn't had a chance to uh, check out Hendrick's site, uh, passionforwood.com, uh, Hendrick's up in Canada. And uh, it's I like the site. I like uh, talking with Hendrick. He's got some amazing DVDs. A lot of content on uh, on those DVDs. So we're going to be giving them one of them away. Uh, one of them away later today. So that's what we're doing there. Greg says I've not really used featherboards before. Now mainly want them as a fence table set. Yeah, I've um I've got a few different versions, and I'll be going over them uh them later. And I'll show you what I got and, and see. And uh, I had a few different versions because of different setups that I had. So um, we'll uh, we'll go into them. A couple of things I want to go over first quick is uh, there's a big thing online about uh, woodworking classes. And actually, uh, I guess you'd say more the lack of woodworking classes in schools. And I just wanted to kind of show 
Uh, I live in, in North Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and it's, it's a small um, community, but we do require our kids to take some uh, woodworking classes. It's actually required for, for one of the quarters, and my daughter came home with her first project, and she needed a little help. They had to make a vehicle, and of all things, she picked the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile, and I got to help her with that a little bit, and she learned a little bit about the scroll saw and the process. Um, she learned almost, I think, uh, as much about doing some of it at home as she did in class, but not everybody has the opportunity to have a shop like I have at home for them. So it was kind of nice that the other kids got to do that stuff. And I just wanted to show one of the other things she had to build was this duck. And it's one where when you, you put it down, it, it, it flaps its feet as it walks. And she did a really good job. I mean, you know, if you, if you look at it, she painted it. She she cut the whole thing out. She's got the little handle. It's a, basically a kid's toy, and uh, and I'm proud of her doing it. It's pretty cool. And one of the other projects was uh, was this boat. Uh, it's got a, a, a wind up paddle wheel, and she tested it. And her her One Direction obsession. She named it the SS Nile Horan. But uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> so this this one we we tested. It works good and. It was kind of cool to actually see the the kids doing woodworking yet. It, it's not just just a few people um, doing it. It's it's the whole class is required to take at least a quarter of that. Uh, I'm sure some of them it'll spark some interest and they'll do more, and some of them they won't. But uh, like I said, I'm I'm glad she has the exposure to the stuff here at home, and I'm glad other kids have the chance to do some of that stuff too. It's uh it's good to see some of it going. So yeah, rubber band powered paddle wheel. It's uh. It actually it works pretty good. It goes pretty quick. So um, we tested it in the sink. I guess she tested it in the tub, otherwise too. So and she had to paint it. Uh, the paint didn't stick as well. I guess they used some some paint that turned all the water purple. But uh, I'm I'm happy to see that our community is one of them that actually has the um, the woods class and and keeps doing that stuff. It, it sparks some interest in some people and and gets them going. So that's. Uh, that's my take on that. And then a couple other little things quick. I kind of have uh, one new toy. Um, I ordered it a while ago, and it had been on back order. Uh, it's uh, Woodpecker's Fibonacci Gauge. And I had made one, um, this type here. It's Basically, it, it, it does proportions when you're drawing stuff out. And... I made this one off of a, a set of plans that I found somewhere, and, and I, I ordered this one more for the accuracy. And what I'm thinking of doing with this one is actually scaling it up and using this one for design, because your proportions are figured out through these. You know, this is is visually appearing appealing with these two, and this to this, and you can do um, multiples of them for for design work. And this is great on small projects. It's obviously a small one, and they have larger sizes. I mean, the, the one is, I, I think they said three feet or something like that. Um, I'm going to scale this one up and make a wooden version of, of larger so I can do as I'm designing and building at the same time with some of the stuff that I do. Uh, for a small project, this one's going to be great, and for design work, it'll be great, but it's just something that, that I ran across and, and thought it was fun. And the other thing was I've been using the uh, Veritas jig for um... – <laughs> why did I buy one when I already made one? Um, I think I wanted to make sure, one, that mine was uh, was accurate, and it, it, it was pretty accurate other than I kind of dinged it at one point, and if you can – see how they're not quite lined up anymore. It works for the most part, and I thought, ah, it was a decent price that they had on it, and then I can take this one and scale it up and make the same thing but a larger version. Um, and I always kind of wanted to make a larger version anyway. Um, but as far as the the other thing, it, it's far from new, um, this little sharpening jig that I've been using. Uh, I guess I had always used it. Just I, I put the chisel in and I kind of matched it visually on the angle and I finally made myself a, a goofy little block that makes it pretty easy to I just grab a chisel and show you. You basically you, you put the chisel here, you you match this up on here and your angle set and there's a there's an an upper and a lower marked and then I have the degrees marked with, with uh, what degree they're at when I have it on there so. 
Yeah, and yes, I did buy one when I made one because, well, I like to buy tools. I think I'm as much of a, a tool collector as I am a woodworker half the time. So, but that that's pretty much. I normally I'm out there online more and buying stuff and doing things, but uh, with um, with my last class ending up not that long ago and uh, a few other things going on, I haven't really had the opportunity to be in the shop nearly as much as I would have liked to. But, um, hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you on there. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the new toys I've been playing with lately. And I'm going to be getting in the shop. My next project is actually uh, my mom and dad need some, uh, uh, some cabinet doors made. And I have the wood uh, all ready. The they're going to be just recessed panel doors. They're uh, bead panels and router tables. Table is going to take take uh, most of the the work doing that. So um, let's see if I can get my other computer on here. So when I do the uh, the thing on the other side, Tim, how's the uh, you design it? I build it thing going. I haven't been online a whole lot lately. <laughs> <coughs> Tim, Chris, Greg. We have a few people on here tonight. That's cool. By a phone, he says. So how are you? You're, you're logged on on your phone? Awesome. If it isn't coming through, I might have to just go to Ustream. I'll be watching, I'm just not chatting. Oh, <laughs> no problem, man. Hey, it's good to see you either way. Um, well, I suppose I better get to the giveaway part so I can get to uh, get to play in with, uh, with the featherboards a little bit. So we're doing Hendrix sharpening and tuning hand planes and chisels. It's uh, I think it's a great DVD. There's uh, I mean I've been doing sharpening stuff for a long time. Um, there's a lot of good pointers, even if for somebody who has been doing this stuff a while. So let's pick a winner. I do a drum roll, but not real good at that anyway. Kurt Willis. Kurt Willis is the winner of the Sharpening and Tuning Hand Planes and Chisels DVD from Hendrick. And I will email you a code and the website that you need to go to. All you need to do is enter that code that I send you, and you will be uh, the winner of the... DVD from Hendrick, and thanks for commenting. All right, no, featherboards. So, I guess featherboards do a few different things. Um, one, they hold stuff in place. They, they keep you safe. I mean, there's everything. I think I'm actually going to switch over to the other camera. Um, you, you won't see my face as much, but uh, you will see what I'm doing with the featherboards. And I'm going to swivel my computer around so I can see the chat room a little bit here. So bear with me as I get around to the other side. <coughs> Excuse my cough, everybody. Like I said, you can't see me, but you can see the, uh, the table saw here. Um, we, I've got a few different feather boards that I've been using. I mean, here's, here's one that I, you know, literally put together myself. You know, I just, and what I do with this one, I actually have a miter bar from, uh, oh, what's the company right now? I can't think of, uh, Milescraft. Milescraft has a set of feather boards that I bought that came with these miter bars. And you, you run a bolt up through here. I actually you run it up this way so that the, if you can see on here or not, there's a little bit of an angle in here, and you run the bolt up through this way. Then it basically, you I use a, 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 a knob, and I turn it on here, and it holds it in place. And what it does is it, it holds the board up against the fence like this. Um, that's just a, a homemade one. I mean, all I did was you know, I, I ran it, if you can see on the bottom here, you know, I ran it into the table saw and backed it out carefully. I mean, it, it probably isn't the best, most 
wonderful safe way to do it, but uh, it, it worked and it, it made uh, made a feather board that I've been using for a long time. I have a much larger version of this as well. Uh, I have a uh, the clamps that I can use to put um, another board on this way to the fence, and then there's some other ones that come down and hold it. But what I use the most on my table saw is this contraption. Uh, it holds up. It holds it up next to the fence with these fingers, and it holds it down with these fingers. So it almost works like a kick, anti kickback. When you have it in place, loosen these up a little bit. Say you're gonna you're gonna cut your board or you're gonna make a, a one inch board. I'm going to cut off one inch there. You have it in place, it's easy to slide it over. You lock these two magnets in place. And you just slide this one down when you loosen it. And you just tighten these up. And it's holding it up against the fence and down to the table. And it, it, it's hard to pull it back, too. And that's why I like where it works both ways. I think uh, Shannon Rogers actually mentioned this uh, same setup, this mag switch setup like this. Uh, on one of the wood, recent Wood Talk Online uh, radio shows, and this is the one I use the most. I actually use it without this this top piece on more than anything, but this is the one I use more than anything. But it's because I have a cast iron top, I can use this. Without a cast iron top, you can't use the mag switch stuff. Um, it, it's easy to turn on and off. The one thing I don't like about th the one thing I really do like about this one is it it has that top down this way. It also has riser blocks, so I can position this the same way that these fingers are holding against. So it has double, so something's taller. So I can have it in this orientation or both in the same way. If I have a smaller version like this, these are two magnets underneath, and this is the same thing. It'll hold it up next to the fence here, just like that. Or if I'm on the other side for some reason, and what I like about this one is this works on the bandsaw as well because you're going this way on the bandsaw this it would work opposite for me on the bandsaw so this wouldn't work as well <clears throat> now the other thing prior to having my nice big cast iron top here i had an aluminum top craftsman table saw so the mag switch didn't work on aluminum either and what i had prior to that was it's the the miles craft version of basically the same thing now, the nice part about this is you know, it, it can go way out or it can go in pretty close too. Yeah, I like having toys. <laughs> so this one works nice. And the same thing is it, it comes in this little kit. And if you can see on the cover of the kit, it's got a riser block the same way that the mag switch one works. So you can stack these up. And on the bandsaw, this works nice when you're doing resawing because it's stacked up that big. Where this one with the bandsaw, it's facing the wrong way. I can only use it in this orientation. If I push it you know, this other way, it doesn't work. Um, I like that this way. Same thing, this mag switch, these magnets are great, but it doesn't work on my router table because, well, my router table isn't cast iron either, but the miner slot works with these Milescraft ones. And it also works with, I use the, the one miter bar the the thing i liked about the milescraft why i got these first with my aluminum craftsman table saw it was one it was aluminum and two the the miner slot is not a standard size on a craftsman table saw it, it's smaller and they actually included the the bars for the standard size and the smaller size right in there so it could work with just about any one that you found so the smaller stuff like you find on a um some of the sanders they have the smaller miter slots not the not the big three-quarter like a, a table saw has so it works on both of those things and like the aftermarket kind of stuff that isn't standard size <clears throat> the other thing if you make your own you don't you know you you don't have to get this miles craft thing just so you get this little miter bar you can you talk to them and they might sell you just this miner bar. Milescraft is actually a pretty good company when it comes to replacing things. They've been, uh, I've worked with them on a couple of things that they just, 
I didn't even have to prove anything. And pretty much I called and told them that I was missing a part from something I bought, and they just sent me a new one. No questions asked. The Craig, along with many other companies, make standard miter bars. So I mean, it, it you know you can pick up any miter bar you want. You can make your own. Um, I've made them out of maple. I made them out of pine. That was a mistake. Uh, that doesn't really wear very well. Um, hardwood is good. Um, I, obviously, you know I like uh, micro jigs. Got their uh, zero touch, zero zero touch, zero play miner bar. I'm still in the process of making my sled. Uh, hopefully that video will be out uh, by the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> it seems to take forever when you're going to school to do stuff, but those are the the feather boards that I use. I have. I can't seem to place it right now. It's out in the garage, but I have a very big version of this. If you don't want to mess around with the whole minor slot and everything else, I clamp it down. I mean, it, it's it's about this wide, and I'm I'm thinking two and a half feet long. And what I end up using that is if I clamp it out here because of different things I need to hold in, it, it's big enough. I can just clamp it right to the table. Yes, and Chris uh, Chris Wong mentioned as far as the runners go, a quarter saw on hardwood is, is is the best for the runners, and I completely 100% agree. And the quarter saw will end up doing less warping; it'll you'll have less problems with it, and you will end up being happier in the long run if you use quarter saw <laughs> and a hardwood. Like I said, I used pine once. Uh, we'll, I won't be making that mistake again. <laughs> As far as far as the the feather boards go, I mean those are the ones that I use and, and what I've been happy with over time. And I and I guess it was it was brought up in the forum that uh, some people had some questions about the uh, about the feather boards, and I'm like, well, hey, that's a good topic. These are the ones that I've been using. The mag switch one is the one I use the most, and I think I use it the most because it's the easiest to just I have it. I have the magnets turned on. It's stuck on the side of the table saw. When I need it, I turn them off, grab it, set it on top, turn them back on, and it's done. That's all I have to do. I don't have to mess with anything else. <clears throat> there are situations like the, the router table, and if you don't have a cast iron top, that the mag switch is just not going to work. Um, that's just pretty much the way it is. Or if, if, you, if you don't... Um, like if you have that th this setup, this one is is the wrong direction to be using on a bandsaw because you're cutting on the opposite side of that. I wish this one was made in the opposite direction, and it might be. I don't. I mean, you can look for it. I don't know if it was. I would buy that to be able to stack them up and run it on the bandsaw because resawing it would be wonderful. But there's not a lot of room on that side of the um, the blade either. And Chris also mentioned, don't forget wax. Yes, if you're going to make your own hardwood runners, especially, make sure that you wax the the runners to make sure that they're they they slide in and out. But at the same time, if you're going to make those runners, <coughs> what I like this one works. The way I made my wood runners is I ended up cutting. I drilled the hole and I had a slot cut on both sides, so when it pushed up it actually separates it to hold it in place and that way you don't have it jiggling or moving in any way. Anchor bandsaws has the frame on the right and blade on the left. Oh hey cool I did not know that. Then that would well I'm not replacing mine because my Laguna I am very happy with. <laughs> but I did not know that the, the bandsaws were set up that way that's kinda cool. <clears throat> so that's pretty much what I got on the featherboards. If if there's any questions, then feel free fire them out to me, email me, post them on the forums. However it works. I mean, that's the stuff that I generally use and how I go about um, using the featherboards. On the on the router table, I, I obviously I can't use the mag switch one, so it's always. Um, Either one of my homemade ones that I have on there, or uh, one of the Milescraft ones that slides in and out on that miner slot that I have on there. And, and honestly, 
I think it's the only use I've ever seen for the minor slot, uh, other than if you have a sled for some reason. It, the minor slot holds the feather boards. I also have uh, some stand-up um, parts to the fence that have a minor slot in them, so I can hold it down and then to the fence at the same time. So I can use both of them in on the on the router table too. Yes, thank you, Chris. I wanted I knew I wanted to mention that, and I completely forgot to say something. I am going to switch over to the other camera, and I'm going to go through exactly what you just mentioned. <laughs> the biggest, the I guess the the most important safety part of the featherboard is when you're setting this thing up. This featherboard should be in front of the blade, so toward the front of the table saw. If you're going to have it on the blade, when you're cutting, you're going to be pushing this wood into the into the blade, and you're going to have a kickback of that outside, and this whole thing is going to be a missile going the back way. Um, I've never, don't ever push from here back of the blade. If you're pushing back here, you're taking that off-cut piece and pushing it in and causing binding on the blade as well. So either way, you want it to be in front of this blade. So you're not pushing it into the blade because you're going to cause kickback if you don't do that. Thank you for mentioning that, Chris. I, I, I had it in my head that I wanted to mention about that, and I didn't. <laughs> if, you, if you ever do it the other way, you will know exactly why you don't do it that way. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I always in front of the blade. That's the biggest part. Thanks a lot. I, I had it on my notes and completely looked right over it. So, um, but yeah, it's it's um, they're helpful. They they're nice. I I guess I don't use them as much as I used to because of I have the grippers now and having the grippers go through there. It it's nice to do that. But when it gets to a smaller piece and I want to make sure it's pushed up just right, there's a lot of times I'll set that mag switch so it's pushing down and pushing over, and I'll use the, the grippers behind the blade to kind of push it, you know, in front of the um, featherboard and then behind the blade to finish the, the, the push through. So. Uh-oh, hang on, I got something coming through here. We got something about this, this, this snow. Yeah, I got an ad on Ustream coming through my own stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I when I demoed it, I did show it, you know, being set up in front of the blade, but I want to make sure that I emphasize that that's where you want it. Don't ever set it up behind the blade, either even with the blade or behind the blade. It's going to cause a kickback, and, and you're going to get hurt. So I hate, hate to see somebody do that because I, I missed it for some reason. So. Well, that's um, that's pretty much what I had for tonight. I mean, if anybody else has got anything you want to go over, I mean, I guess I could turn the camera around and show you on the um, uh, show you on the router table or on the bandsaw. But it, it's pretty much the same thing. Keep it in front of the blade. Keep it on the right side of the um, the the bit on the router table. I mean, you, you know, I guess I don't. I keep it probably a little closer than I would with the um, with the router table, but yes, and I've put it before and after the bit on the router table as well. I guess I, I still have that thing where I don't put it right on the bit, but I put it before and after just to kind of keep it down and keep it up against the fence. Um, it, I guess right against it on the, uh, on the router table, I've heard you know, right over it is not as big of a deal because you're, but I guess I've never put it right over. I put it before and after. I usually try to keep it on the right-hand side unless for some reason I'm, I'm thinking it might pull off of there. Uh, same same thing with, uh, with the bandsaw. I mean, you put it after, you can still bind on that blade. Uh, although you don't have as much worry about a kickback situation on a bandsaw, you still have the problem that you, know, you can you can hurt the machine, you can hurt the wood, you you can possibly hurt yourself if it bounces a little bit. So, um, 
that's pretty much what I got as far as the um, as far as the feather boards go. And uh, like I said before, and if you have any questions for either the live cast or a normal show that we're doing at any point, feel free to give us a call. Skype name is Ravenheart. Number is nine two zero nine three three four nine four zero. Any other time as well, I mean, feel free to use contact form or email at ravenheartrenditions at ravenheart.com. Raven is spelled with an I. And I guess uh, that's it as far as the, um, the the live cast goes. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And next time, we may do one in December. Keep your eye out on the site, and I'll let you know when the next one is. I'm going to cut the recording part, and uh, we'll still have some conversation about stuff. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to stop recording. We can still talk for a while, though.